A lot of sugarcane and bamboo farms in Minecraft are unoptimized, slow, and wasteful. So in this video, I'll show you how to build my improved, easy, and efficient design starting right now. So this is the standard sugarcane farm design. There's an observer looking at the top piece of sugarcane with a piston that'll break the second to top piece of sugarcane, and those are just linked up with some redstone. They're next to some flowing water, which makes an easy collection system. So they go to the center and end up in this chest. And this design is not completely terrible, but there are some major issues with it, and I'll show you those right now. Let's just have this machine trigger and break all the bamboo. You can see that just happened there and let's just watch and see how many of those ended up in the chest we had a stack in 17 of sugarcane in here before so we gained about 17 sugarcane with that break now if we go inside of the farm here and grab all the sugarcane that did not go into the hopper and collect it the result might be a little bit shocking and that's the fact that there is 15 pieces of sugarcane that are in here that's right that means that almost 50% of the sugarcane that is grown by this sugarcane farm design is completely wasted, and it doesn't go anywhere. Yes, there are designs that integrate a hopper minecart pickup system, but at that point a much better system could be made anyway. With this traditional design, literally half of these plants are not being pushed, because this piston is pushing these blocks away. They land and end up in the water, and they flow down here, but the blocks that are up here are not pushed, they're just broken. So they fall down and land right down here like this, never to be picked up by the water and just left to despawn. And although of course when one of these grows and touches the observers it'll trigger a section of this making the rest of them be pushed off, still a decent amount of the sugarcane produced can stay floating in here and be wasted and it is generally anywhere from 10 to 50 percent. But there's another issue with this farm. Let's say it grew like it usually would where some of the pieces are grown two blocks tall and we have one of them trigger them all to be pushed. Well the same result will happen or if we look in the chest here, we do have some sugarcane. It looks like here we've collected 16, but still the piece of sugarcane that triggered them to be broken is never collected. So although depending on how many observers you have, that's not a massive issue, a lot of these farms don't have this many observers, and that's where the other issue comes in. This is a lot of observers. We have an entire observer for every single piece of sugarcane, and that is completely unnecessary. And so in the farm design I'll show, I'm going to make one that uses literally one observer for the entire thing. It is 99% lost lossless, you'll maybe lose one in a hundred piece of sugarcane, versus this one where depending on your farm you can lose all the way up to 50% of it, and it's also more compact and cheaper to build, so I'll show you that right now. So the best part about this design is that you can build it as large or as small as you'd like, but because most people like just having a specific tutorial, I will show it at this certain size of only two sections, but I would suggest to build this as large as you can, as the larger it is, the less percentage of the build is wasted space. Base. So to make this you're going to need 64 plus 5 rails, 27 powered rails, a minecart with hopper, 9 blocks of redstone, a redstone comparator, a redstone torch, 2 chests, 2 hoppers, and a lever, although of course you can have more chests and hoppers if you want to have a larger storage system, which I would suggest. You're going to want building blocks, I just have here blocks of amethyst because they look good. You want a stack and 16 of slabs of any type. You want 3 stacks of glass plus 30. You want a stack and a half of a block that you can place sugarcane on, so I have here moss blocks. You're going to want a total of 80 plants to start off the farm with. This is a sugarcane and a bamboo farm design, so I have half sugarcane and half bamboo here, but it really does not matter at all. You're going to want two water buckets to start your infinite water source for those. You're going to need 64 and 16 pistons, or 80 pistons. You're going to need 64 redstone dust plus 19 redstone dust, an observer, and a daylight detector to make this build. But it's actually incredibly simple. The first step is to dig an 8x22 block area, one block down into the ground. And this will give you the place to put the collection system. As in this design, the collection system is invisibly stored underneath the rest of the build. Then you'll want to grab out all the supplies in the first shulker box that has all the rails and things like that in it. And we're going to place two groups of rails, one like this and one like that. And then we're going to place those all the way along the rest of the machine, down to the end until there's just one block left here. 
Then we'll go over here and we'll place them down again. And we'll place these till it's two blocks from the edge, go around and sort of make this thin loop here. Then we'll connect those two groups of rails and we'll place them along here. You may have noticed that you've run out of the standard rails and that's because we're about to place in some powered rails. Three blocks away from the edge of this loop here, so that would be right here once we have two of the straight rails. Then we're going to start by placing down powered rails that are three blocks long. Before we do that in the center, we'll place down two blocks of redstone. And then we're going to get the powered rails here, place them like that and like that. And we're also going to continue on along the same axis there as those two pieces of redstone to put two other redstone blocks here that will also power three powered rails each. Then four blocks from the edge here, so that would be three of the straight rails from the edge. We're also going to place down three of the powered rails and continue on like we did before, placing the redstone blocks in the center all the way across. And of course this will be to give us power so that that minecart does not stop somewhere on the track, as this system's items are going to be collected by a hopper minecart. And then we'll just grab any of the rails that we broke and use those to connect up the rest of this. However, when we get to the end here, we're going to have to do a little bit of fancy things to get all those rails to work. Now with all the extra rails that we've collected, we are going to finish up the circuit like this. Although it's not going to stay like that, the first thing we just have to do real quick is break these two blocks here on the right side. And then we're going to place a redstone block down and place two of those powered rails so we have one powered rail left. Then we're going to break these two rails right here and start by directing this rail around like this. So basically it sort of goes in a zigzag and then we're going to have it direct down to here. So we're going to break two blocks over here and sort of make it go in a zigzag all the way down here. Once it's at the bottom there we're going to place the powered rail. And then we're going to grab this rail and we need to have this rail go into here. But how do we do that? It's only going to turn this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this rail and break this rail. Put both of them back like this and we're going to flick the lever like that then unflick it and you can see it stays in that position where it's turned toward that rail and will go down here. If that doesn't work for you, sometimes keeping that lever flicked on will work as it basically depends on how you oriented this entire farm, the way that flicking this will make the rail move. So you either want to keep this on or off all the time, depending on whatever gives the track this shape. Then we're just going to clear out a small area around this rail that we just dug out and we're going to dig four blocks down here. We place two chests here and two hoppers going into that chest chest, then a powered rail on top of this hopper, and you can use either some of your building blocks or some of your other blocks, I'll just use my building blocks here. We're going to place one here, we're going to dig underneath here a little bit, and we want to have a comparator that is reading that hopper. So we'll actually break this real quick, place the comparator down there, and then we're going to put a block on top of the comparator. The comparator is going to go into this block, this block is going to have a torch on top of it, and then above that torch will be another block, and of course this can be just the dirt or whatever if you want it to blend in. And we will finish by grabbing a singular piece of redstone dust from over here, and we're going to place it on the track just like that. You can see that just turned on. And so basically what'll happen is let's say there's some things above this like this. We have the minecart go, it'll pick them up. It'll go in there, it will unload them, and it'll stay there as they unload. But once it's done unloading, it'll go back on the track. It will go all the way around because this is going to be where the plants are going to grow. It'll end up back there and just cycle around an entire loop until there's things to pick up. Now on to the next part, which is building where the actual sugar cane and all that will go. Grab your moss blocks or whatever other block you're using to grow the sugar cane on top of and place those on top of every single rail that is in this design. Something you can also do if you want is make those rails and the entire collection system be one block lower if you want these moss blocks to be flush with the ground. And that's a design choice that is completely up to you. And now that we've made that, we're also going to place moss blocks on these two rows in the center. And this is where the bamboo and the sugar cane will grow. But the sugar cane needs water, so we're going to grab these spruce slabs and place them down like this in the two spaces between the moss blocks that we also just placed down. And on this side here where the collection system is, break all the moss blocks that are on this little piece of edge, make these spruce slabs go one further out, and then place the moss blocks around that, as this will sort of help to cover up some of the redstone there and make it look a little bit better. And you can see we've used every moss block then. Now just grab your two water buckets, make an infinite water source, and place that water down water logging every single one of these slabs. Some people also prefer to use stairs here, but it really doesn't matter at all as this will be covered up by the build. 
and the last of those are now waterlogged. The next step is to take your building blocks and place one of them on top of every single one of these waterlogged slabs here, and that'll make sure that none of the bamboo or the sugarcane is pushed out into there and stuck. Then grab all of your pistons and place them in here facing towards yourself. So there is a piston facing towards the block that is above each one of these moss blocks, and this of course will break the sugarcane or the bamboo when it grows to make sure that it can be harvested. And unlike the other design, we actually have the redstone above this be vertical, so we can have these two pistons be back to back easily just like this. And now place your building blocks, one on top of every single one of the pistons, so that we have a place to put redstone dust. And then place that redstone dust, one on every single piece of the amethyst here, to make sure that when this redstone is powered on, it can make all these pistons push out to break the crops. And now plant down the sugarcane or the bamboo or a mix of both, whatever you want inside of here. I think I'll just put sugarcane on the inner bit here and bamboo on the outer bit. If your farm is absolutely only for bamboo, then you can omit that step of having the waterlogged slabs. But since waterlogged slabs aren't difficult to make or place down, I would suggest having them there anyways, as then if you ever do want to convert it into a sugarcane farm, you will have that ability. And there are 20 slots for sugarcane or bamboo on every single piece of this farm, so one here, two here, and one here. So we're going to place three glass up like this on every single side, and sort of make those go up the side of the farm. You can also place them on the side of the plants that you just put down there, whatever you want, just to make sure that none of these plants will spew out and not be picked up when they are broken by the piston. And we'll place six over here on the edge, and we'll also place them over here on this side to make sure it's all sealed in. The reason I was saying earlier that the bigger this is, the less blocks you have to waste, is because as you see over here, we're using a massive amount of glass to make these not fall out, but in the center here, there is only six glass on every side, so of course the more central rows there are, the less glass blocks you're going to need to protect this from falling out. Now you can put glass blocks on top of here if you want. I've made in the farm supply lists enough glass blocks to put on the top of all these. However, if you have a bamboo farm, something you may want to do is make the glass be taller around here or even not have a glass roof at all. The reason why is even though this farm will trigger frequently, so the bamboo shouldn't be very tall when it's being broken, and ideally no bamboo should be wasted, sometimes it can grow very tall very quickly, and so having some glass blocks on the side will enable this to not have any issues. And as you would see here, if we do put the glass blocks up here, that will limit the bamboo from growing any taller than three blocks high, which will technically make the farm rates be slower, but also none of the bamboo up here will be lost, so it's up to you whether or not you want to make this glass chamber taller for the bamboo, or whether or not you just want it to be this tall. But for me personally, I'd probably just not put on a roof and let it grow as high as it can. Now you want to find the center of this farm, so we're just going to count from both sides. And the center is right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to place down a daylight detector right next to the center and we're going to have an observer facing that daylight detector and then right next to the observer that glass block we're going to break and put a block of amethyst there. And on the other side we'll also break that and place a block of amethyst there and bridge across here with redstone dust. Then basically when this is triggered you'll notice all of the redstone is active which makes all these break. And it's not incredibly important whether it's in the exact middle or not as the power level here is not zero so it's not a big issue. All we have to do now is put the hopper minecart down here, push it so it goes off, and now the farm is fully done, and of course you can cover this up and make it look however you want. However, something to be aware of is how you'll be running this farm. If you're going to be AFKing at it, you're going to want to change the design just slightly, as this design right here will only make the farm be active during daytime. To add nighttime functionality, simply place another daylight detector, right click on it to turn it to night mode, and have another observer facing that daylight detector like this. Then this will have signals that'll make this turn on and off during the day and during the night. Because the way that these things work, they will have multiple signals throughout the day as the daylight detector state changes during the day multiple times, same with the daylight detector set to night mode, and so this should pop off far before it ever grows too tall. There is only two observers in this entire design, or one if you're not doing things at night. And overall, it's a very efficient design, which space-wise is about 50% more efficient. It uses basically no observers, which makes it much cheaper. And in terms of lost sugarcane, the lost total is almost zero. I hope you enjoyed this sugarcane and bamboo farm, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.